Hello biology students of Seattle. My name is Ms. Craig and I teach at Franklin High School in Southeast Seattle and I will be leading you through today's lesson. So let's begin. Um, so this first slide, you by now have seen this several times. Again, we just want to remind you that your health and your family come first. So as you're doing schoolwork, remember to work at your own pace, um, but prioritize your own emotional and mental and physical health and that of your family. Um, also, as you're learning, if possible, it's so helpful for you to be able to discuss your ideas and your questions um, with other students who are also learning. So if you can do that in a safe way, so not in person, that would be awesome. Um, and then also, if you have any questions, please check in with your teacher. Send them an email or however your teacher prefers communication. Okay, so let's get into this first lesson. So this is lesson 3.3, Meiosis Demo with Cherwibbles. Okay, so we're building on lesson 3.2, which was our previous lesson, where we introduced kind of the foundations of this concept of meiosis, the process that organisms go through to produce gametes, also known as sex cells or sperm and egg. If you did not complete lesson 3.2, you'll definitely want to go back and do that before this lesson because we're going to be moving into more details, and so you'll want those foundations before we move ahead. So here we go. Okay, so here are the goals for this lesson. So after we go, you go through this PowerPoint and watch the whole video, you should first be able to describe the process of meiosis, including those two rounds of cell division. Next, you should be able to describe the process of recombination, also known as crossing over, of the homologous chromosomes. And then finally, you should hopefully be able to describe the gametes that are formed as a result of meiosis, including the number of cells that are formed and the number of chromosomes that each of those cells contain. All right. So to start with, we're actually going to jump right in with a special guest. So mix Miss Fox from Lincoln High School has recorded a demonstration for you where she's going to use her chromosomes that she made in lesson 3.1 in the Cherwibble activity to show you in detail what happens at the molecular and cellular scale during the process of meiosis. If you also made your own set of Cherwibble chromosomes in that lesson 3.1, now would be a great time to get them out so you can try to follow along with her because doing that manipulative on your own will really help solidify the learning for you. So I'm going to pause and I'll see you back here in just a moment after you learn more about meiosis with Miss Fox. Hi, my name is Miss Fox and I'm a biology teacher at Lincoln High School. And I'm going to work with you today on modeling meiosis, lesson 3.3. So we worked earlier together when we looked at lesson 3.1 where we modeled the chromosomes. So I had to have these chromosomes already made from that activity. You'll notice I have two long chromosomes, I have two medium chromosomes, and I have two small chromosomes. And these chromosomes have the versions of the genes already on them from our last activity. We flipped some coins and we figured out um, what traits they had on them. So on here I have a big G which is uh, green fur and here I have a little G which is yellow fur. So they are going to, these genes are going to determine what um, the trait will be in the Cherwibble. And so uh, we have our, you'll notice today I have six chromosomes one, two, three, four, five, six. And the whole purpose of meiosis is to reduce the chromosome number in half. So today we start off with six chromosomes. So our final result will be cells that have only three chromosomes in them. Because we are producing uh, gametes or sex cells. So we're preparing these cells for sexual reproduction. And so we have our six chromosomes here. Um, the very first thing that will need to take place is DNA replication. And I happen to have these chromosomes left over from our previous activity where all we need to do is show that we are going to make an exact copy of these chromosomes. So you'll notice I'll put, uh, the, I'll make it a copy of the two long chromosomes. And you'll notice when I do that, I put, I have an exact copy. Notice both of these have the same versions of the genome because they're an exact copy um, of each other. And so the same for um, the yellow. I have the same version of the gene on these. It's a little G, which is yellow fur color in our Cherwibble. 
And I'm gonna do the same for all the other chromosomes. So these are going to, I'm kind of stick them really close together so it look like they're attached here. So I'm gonna replicate all of my chromosomes. And so I still have, um, although these are replicated chromosomes, I still have a total of six chromosomes. So one, two, three, four, five, six chromosomes um, in all. And so we're gonna go through the process of meiosis now to reduce the chromosome number. And the very fir the first part of the meiosis, what happens is the homologous pairs are going to come together. And so homologous pairs are like chromosomes. So homo meaning like or same. Um, the l same chromosomes are going to um, come together. You'll notice the two long chromosomes are very similar in each other. They're very alike. They both have the allele for or the, ver the gene for fur color. So they have the G's. Um, one, they may be different in the version of the gene that they have, but they do have the same type of gene on them. So they call them homologous pairs, about the same size. They have the same type of genes on them. The two medium will come together. You'll notice again, they have the same uh, type of genes. They have the B. One has a big B and one has a little B, but they have the same type of genes on them, about the same size. And then you also have the small chromosomes come together. So these will come so close together, they are gonna do something called crossing over. And crossing over happens when the chromosomes get really close to each other and they swap genes. And I'm gonna model this today by actually cutting a little bit of my big G off here and a little bit of my little G over here. And I'm gonna swap some of the chromosomes. I just have to use my tape to put it back together. So this actually helps ensure that there is going to be an, uh, a, lots of variation in the uh, gametes or the final product of these cells. So it's kind of really mixing up the genes here. This also could happen to the medium chromosomes and the small chromosomes. I'm just going to do it one time here with the long chromosomes. So the homologous pairs, um, first uh, they get really close together. They do um, can have a crossing over event and I'll show you what that looks like in your for your scenes, so you see how they kind of swap some DNA there. So they actually have, so they're no, they're no longer, they're still chromosomes, but they're no longer identical to each other, right? Um, so uh, the next uh, part is the chromosomes are, the homologous pairs are gonna line up in the middle of the cell. So I'm gonna line them up in the middle of the cell here. I'm gonna put my long chromosomes here, my medium chromosomes here, and my small chromosomes here. And the way they line up, they do line up randomly. It's called independent assortment. And it just means that they can uh, line up in a lot of different ways. So I could have my orange parent and my yellow parent could be on one side or I could swap them this way. So this is actually the way they line up um, is random each time. Um, they always line up with their homologous pairs, but they it is uh, random on which side uh, each parent uh, chromosome will go. So because of that, it's actually increased another step that actually increases the genetic um, diversity of these uh, sex cells or gametes. So the homologous pairs are lined up, and the next stage, um, these homologous pairs are going to separate. So you're gonna have one homologous pair go to one side of the cell, and another one go to the other side of the cell. And then the cell actually ends up pinching off in the middle and making two distinct cells here. And so you'll end up, you'll see that I have, now I still have, uh, I, I have half the number of chromosomes. So I had six chromosomes, but now I have one, two, three in this cell. And in this cell I have uh, one, two, three in this cell. It's not quite ready to go um, to be a sex cell. It needs to reduce the, um, the to go through one more division. Um, and to do that, it's going to line up the chromosomes again in the middle. So it's going to line up 
right here in the middle here. And I'll line this one up in the middle here. And again, these chromosomes are going to separate. So you're going to get one uh, half of the chromosomes coming to one side of the cell and the other half coming to the other side of the cell. And again, this will actually create two distinct cells over here. And over here, this will create two distinct cells on this side as the chromosomes separate. So I can cut this here. And so your final product will be four cells. So I have one, two, three, four. Four cells, each with three unreplicated chromosomes. So I have three unreplicated chromosomes. And if you look here, you'll notice that in each cell, you only have one version of each gene. I have one, I have a little G here that is for the uh, yellow fur color in this one. I have one little, I have one F gene, one B, one E, and so forth. So I have only one set or one of each uh, gene in each cell. And so these actually, these four cells are going to be the sex cells or the gametes. So this is the product of meiosis. I was able to reduce the chromosome number in half. And when I recruit, reduced the chromosome number half from six to three, I was also able to get four gametes. I have four unique gametes. Um, and these four gametes are, it could either be a sperm or an egg cell. Thank you. Okay, welcome back. Um, I hope you enjoyed that demonstration from Ms. Fox and were able to follow along or at least observe how she was performing that process of meiosis to make gametes. Um, so to check our understanding and see what we got out of this process, let's take a look at a little practice. So this diagram here has 10 different images representing different phases of meiosis. Okay, so what you'll want to do is look at these images and then on your own paper, make a little chart and try to determine the order that these go in. Okay, so what I did was just made this little thing looks a lot like eh, what you see up there and just write the number in there. Which number do you think each one represents? Okay, so I'll give you a moment to do that. So pause the video and then when you come back, you will be able to check your work and I'll walk you through the key. Okay, so pause and try on your own. Okay, so hopefully you really did pause and try this on your own so you can check your understanding and identify what you do and don't understand because next we're going to walk through the key. Okay, so these are the correct answers for this is the correct order that we would put these pictures in. So we have here, this is the first phase. Okay, so what I notice in this cell is first a few things. Okay, the number of chromosomes. So in this one cell here, within the nucleus, I see four chromosomes. I see two long chromosomes and two short chromosomes. And something else I also notice is that some of the chromosomes are gray and some are black. Okay, so the first thing I, th I think about here is that um, I think the longer chromosomes are going to be homologous chromosomes. Okay, so remember, homologous chromosomes have the exact same genes, but they can be different because one comes from one parent, one comes from the other. But because they have the same genes, they're going to be the same length. Okay, they have the same amount of genetic material. So these longer chromosomes are going to be homologous with each other, and these two shorter chromosomes are homologous with each other. And so then I'm assuming that the color indicates one set is maternal chromosomes from the biological mother and one set is paternal chromosomes from the biological father. Okay, so now that I've kind of oriented myself to the cell and the chromosomes that we're working with, what I see here within this first image is that this arrow here indicates some kind of change. And the two changes I notice are that one, all these chromosomes have been replicated. Okay, so DNA replication has happened. So now each one is attached at the central mirror to its replicated um, copy. 
And then I also see here that the spindle pole has been replicated, okay, where we just had one before, now we have two. Okay, so our DNA is replicated and we've got two spindle poles. That's a great sign that our cell is preparing to divide. Okay, so next over here, this is image number two. Okay, so this is the next phase. We can tell that this is the next one because right now what we see is these, this nuclear membrane is starting to break down and the spindle fibers are just starting to form near the spindle poles. Okay, so this is still the very beginning of the cell division process. Next, what I see in phase three is that nuclear membrane is completely broken down. Okay, and that means that now that spindle fibers are allowed to actually make contact with those chromosomes. And what I also notice is that they aren't just arranged randomly here. Okay, so if we take a look, we can see these two, our two shorter chromosomes are aligned next to each other and our two larger ones. Okay, so in this first round of meiosis, those homologous chromosomes have lined up next to each other. I noticed something else has also changed. Okay, so where before, if we look back at the beginning phase when these were just replicated, the replicated chromosomes looked identical to each other. However, what has happened is crossing over or recombination. So these chromosomes here have swapped some of their parts. And so now some of these have some genetic material from the biological mother and some genetic material from the biological father. Okay, so there, our homologs are lined up in the center. What happens after that is then those spindle fibers are going to start pulling those homologs to opposite sides of the cell. Okay, so we see those homologous chromosomes getting pulled to opposite um, spindle poles. Okay, they're being pulled apart. When we jump over here, this one happens to be image five, the next one after that. So now those um, new sets of chromosomes have, or sorry, this half the set of chromosomes is in one nucleus and half in another. So we're starting to form those two separate cells, and we see this outer cell membrane is starting to pinch um, to separate as well. Next, image six right here, we now have two individual cells that each have um, half the set of chromosomes that we started with, okay? And these are shown just kind of overlapping. They're not actually still connected. It's just two cells that are near each other. Um, and what we also see here is that these spindle poles have replicated again, indicating that this cell is again preparing to divide. So then, we come over here to image seven, and at this point, we've kind of skipped a few of the steps that we're already familiar with, so that nuclear membrane has broken down, those spindle fibers have formed and attached to the um, chromosomes, and now what we see, okay, so this chromosome no longer has a homolog, okay, so its homologous partner that came from the other parent, it's been, it was already separated from that, it's now in a different cell, so instead of lining up with homologs during the second round of cell division, those replicated chromosomes will be lined up next to each other in the center of the cell. Okay, at this point though we can see they're not exact copies anymore because of that recombination. They now have some bits and pieces of um, the chromosome from the other, the other homologous chromosome from the other parent. Okay, but those, they're lined up in the center there as replicated chromosomes. And then in step eight, now those replicated chromosomes have been separated and are beginning to be pulled to opposite ends of the cell by the spindle fibers. Okay, and this step, so going from seven to eight, that should look very familiar to you. It looks a lot like the cell division we learned about in our development unit, the process of mitosis. Okay, so this part is very similar. And then step nine, now again, we have those new nuclear membranes forming around each set of DNA in the cell membrane is also starting to separate. And then finally, our resulting image here is we've got four cells, each with two chromosomes. Okay, and what's also super cool is we can see that the DNA each of these is unique. Okay, so none of these sets of chromosomes is identical to the other ones. Okay, so we started with one cell with four chromosomes. And we end with four cells, each with two chromosomes half the number of chrom the chromosomes that we began with. Okay, and that's the whole goal of meiosis. Okay, so to divide the number of chromosomes in half and to also provide some variation for that sexual reproduction.
So hopefully that helped for you to check your work and also maybe add some notes um, about what was going on in that process. Okay, so that's actually all for today. We just wanted to dig in and go a little bit more detail in this process of meiosis. Um, so again, to check your understanding, see if you can describe the process of meiosis, including those two rounds of cell division. Maybe test yourself. Can you resort those cards? Can you use your own set of chromosomes to try to model the process on your own? Um, Next, number two, see, can you just see if you can describe recombination or crossing over of homologous chromosomes? And then three, can you describe the gametes that are formed in meiosis, including the number of cells that are formed and the number of chromosomes that they each contain? Okay, so if you can do all of those things, then you're in a solid spot and ready to move ahead to the next lesson. Um, but before you do that, please consider completing the optional meiosis demo analysis questions. So those analysis questions will kind of help you make meaning from some of the biggest ideas of that demonstration that Ms. Fox did with you to show you how to use the cherubal chromosomes to replicate this process of meiosis. And so even if you don't answer those, I recommend you look at them and see if you can in fact answer them with confidence. Um, they'll be a good way for you to see what you maybe need to review or practice some more. And then second, also at this point, please make a new entry in your learning tracking tool titled 3.2 and 3.3 meiosis. So you're going to summarize what you have learned in this lesson and the previous lesson about this process of meiosis, how organisms make gametes to pass on their DNA. Okay, so that's all I have for you for this lesson today. Um, I enjoyed learning with you. I hope you're staying safe and healthy and continuing to learn at home. Thanks.